Hey everybody, Marvin from Wiscode here and we are out doing some estimates today. So I really wanted to make a quick video when it comes to estimating, some things that you should probably remember and maybe some tips to help you out when you're estimating a driveway for, well, we say seal coating, but it's a lot of people use seal coating as a blanket term for um, any patching on driveways, which is usually small patching, um, crack filling, and then actual seal coating itself. So let's just say we're at this point, you've got your call, your call came in or your message on Facebook or an email, and it's the customer wanting you to come out and give them an estimate right away. Try to make sure that you always get a phone number for contact in the actual address where the uh, estimate is going to take place. So you've got those things. Now you get there, you arrive at your property, and you take a look at an evaluation. One of the most common questions I get um, through our social media is how much do I charge a square foot? Now that varies quite a bit and it varies on wh where you're at in the country. Um, some places material cost is higher and some certain materials are available, some aren't. So that changes that range as well. And then how much labor is going to go into it. The condition of the pavement really makes a big difference because if it's clean, it's new, it's nicer pavement, you're not going to have as much labor in it. You're not going to have as much material as far as cracks filling goes. And you're probably not going to have as much material as far as seal coating goes because it's not going to take as much to get in those crevices and things, whether you're brooming it or you're brushing it. So the first thing we do is we get out, we take an evaluation of that. If it's going to, in your mind, take more time than it should, or in material, then it should cost more. So our spectrum here, um, and we're a little bit on the higher end as we do have a strong brand here at Wiscote, we try to be anywhere from, on average, 18 cents to 25 cents a square foot. Now, if it's gonna be a lot dirtier, um, if we're going to use more material, if we're going to use higher grade material, we go up per square foot. So it's not a big thing for us to get to the 35 cents a square foot mark, um, depending on the pavement. And if we're going to brush apply, we actually charge more as well because you're going to be more labor intensive as it goes. So those are kind of the, the first things to remember when you're evaluating this pavement is how, because if, if you have two pavements that are similar, but one is very cracked up, it's very dirty and very rough. If you're charging the same price, if you estimate both those drivers at the same price, the one that's very dirty and cracked up versus the nice and clean one with no cracks, you're gonna be shortchanging yourself on the dirty one. You're gonna be out there and be like, oh, this wasn't worth it. And then um, sometimes if you wanna be competitive and you try to charge a higher price for the one that's very clean and isn't gonna be um, as labor intensive, you might miss out on the bid. Um, by trying to aim high and a contractor who knows their stuff um, would come in at a decent price knowing that they're not gonna use as much material and um, not gonna spend as much time working on it. So it really is a feel for that. And um, you get used to it. Some of the best ways is just to practice and um, see kind of where your area is um, and, and feel it out. And when you're estimating, sometimes you win some and you're like, oh, all right. If you're winning almost all your bids, you're either a really good salesman or you're coming in too low. Um, and you do want to have a right margin here because anybody can win the cheap bid. The, the chances of those companies lasting a long time um, is very small being the cheapest bid. So that's the first thing. That's the first tip. That's the first thing you want to remember. The second thing is actually measuring itself. Now we are at a property here. I keep looking over at it um, to hopefully jog some of my memory and some reminders. Um, it's rough, but it's also curved and it widens out and has undefined square edges. So when you measure a yard, um, which this video is on Echo Means Business, so I'm guessing a lot of us are lawn care guys here that are in here. It's easy to, it's easy to measure the square part of the yard, I guess. Um, and same thing with the driveway. If it's a rectangular or square driveway, really easy to measure. If it's not, if it's curved and has lots of widths, varying widths, that's a little bit harder. So I always like to make a personal visit to the estimates. Um, I don't think I missed any this year. I think they were all in person. Um, I wanna see the texture of the pavement and then I wanna see that shape. If the shape looks like I'm gonna shortchange myself because I can't physically measure it in squares with my measuring wheel that's in here, then I will go back and I'll use a software. Um, a free one is um, Map Developers 
and they allow you to use Google Earth to put pins and outline your square footage of your driveway if it's clear and there's no trees above it. Um, I always kind of take that into effect if I'm there, um, what that's going to look like and if I can do that. And that is probably how I'm going to do this one. <clears throat> um, I may get out and measure it with the measuring wheel. I like to get both measurements and see how far I was, how far off I was um, when I'm done. But that's the second tip. The third tip, and this is when estimating as well, is make sure you relay to your client the reason why your estimate may be higher than what they've had before. Or um, in this case, this one we're looking at, it's borderline whether or not we can actually, um, whether or not it's worth it to the customer to maintain this pavement versus just putting their money towards replacing it. So communication is key and just make sure when you're first talking to your client or um, even through email conversations or whatever, you go over the areas of their driveway that are going to be needing more attention or may cost more and your reasons why. Um, that's a big thing because a lot of times they don't get that. They just get, hey, it's this price. Hey, it's this price. Hey, it's this price. And they wanna know why that price difference is so big. The other thing that'll help you do is look like you know what you're talking about, which is always a good thing. Be very professional. You know, it'll help you look professional and it'll just help you win more bids because you seem like you're knowledgeable. So those are a few tips when estimating driveways um, residential driveways for seal coating. I really hope you enjoy it. Um, once again, you can always find this video on echomeansbusiness.com. And if you want to see our other videos and our other information, you can check us out on Instagram. We are on TikTok and um, YouTube too. So um, you can either go to Wiscoat LLC and find that stuff or Blacktop Banter, my podcast, and uh, use both of those tags in any of those with ats and uh, you'll find us. So thanks again. Thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it.